If you really stop to think about it, graffiti can be traced back to cave paintings. Figures and forms are drawn on the wall in order to tell a story. Doing art is really just a feature of human nature. And today, we'll be taking a look at 15 of the most incredible street graffiti ever seen. Number 15, the little girl with the balloon. All right, let's kick this list off with not just something iconic, but with a piece of thought-provoking art that will bring a tear to the eyes of even the coldest person. We are, of course, talking about Banksy's little girl with the balloon. Banksy seemed to come out of nowhere in the early 2000s and quickly rose to prominence and will likely go down as one of the greatest or at least the most famous graffiti artist of all time. And the best part of all of it is that no one knows who he is. He's as mysterious as he is artistic but it's the simplicity of his little girl with the balloon that's able to capture so many hearts with its message. Created in 2002, this work depicts a little girl in a black dress letting go of her heart-shaped balloon, only for it to be whisked away by the wind. But did she let go on purpose, or did her balloon manage to slip away? Seeing as how the words, there is always hope, are written on the wall next to it, we'll leave it up to you to decide. Number 14, We the Youth. If you survived New York in the 1980s, then you probably know all about the icon pop artist Keith Haring. He was part of the awesome counterculture movement that was sparked there and became an HIV advocate through his art. And frankly, all of Haring's art is spectacular, but his piece, We the Youth, really manages to touch on something more. Before beginning the actual mural, Haring spent months scouting locations before deciding on an underprivileged and impoverished neighborhood in Philadelphia. We the Youth has all the characteristics of Keith Haring's work, bright colors, and the faceless, androgynous figures in electric poses. But Harris didn't paint this alone. Instead, he actually recruited 14 local high school students to help him throw this piece up there. The work has since become a world-famous piece of art and stands not only as a beacon of hope for the young people of the 1980s, but also as a sign of defiance to the powers that be, saying, we are here and we are not forgotten a truly powerful piece of graffiti art and a perfect introduction to anyone looking to dive deeper into the medium. Number 13, Etnias. Etnias, or ethnicities in English, was created by the famous artist Eduardo Cobra in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, when they hosted the 2016 Olympics. And the first thing you'll notice, other than the vibrant, eye-popping colors, is its sheer size. Etnias takes up about 30,000 square feet of space and holds the Guinness World Record for the world's largest piece of graffiti art. So what exactly is going on here? Well, Etnias shows five different faces from the five continents to show us that we are all essentially one. And what a better place to depict this feeling of unity and humanity than at the Olympics, where so many nations come together to compete for the gold. But the real beauty of Etnias isn't just the fact that you see five different people, but the fact that these faces are indigenous. Eduardo Cobra chose to show us a Huli person from New Guinea, the Mercy people of Ethiopia, the Cayenne people from Thailand, the Supi people of Europe, and the Tapaho people from the Americas. So not only is Etnia sending the message of unity and respect, but it also provides an awesome opportunity to learn about the folks who were here long before us. It's pretty cool. Number 12, Coexist. Speaking of unity, the next entry on our list seems to have taken the form of bumper stickers on the cars of college students all over the world. There's no doubt that you've seen the Coexist sign at some point in your life, but did you know where it comes from? Coexist is actually an original piece of street art from an artist known as Combo. Combo was born to a Lebanese Christian father and a Moroccan Muslim mother, so needless to say, he gets it. He walks the line between multiple cultures, which gives him a unique perspective, and is perhaps living proof that the world's major religions can in fact coexist. It may come off as a cheesy message, but he's right. Combo started his career as a street artist in 2012, and finally threw up his coexist after being inspired by a Polish designer in 2015. You'll see that the word coexist is written out using the halal, or crescent moon seen in Islam, the Star of David, and finally the Christian cross. It's simple, yet clever, and drives home the message that Combo understands all too well, calling for peace among different beliefs and ideologies. Coexist became especially prominent in the streets of Paris after the terrorist attacks against Charlie Hebdo in 2016. Number 11, King Rabo. Let's flip back the calendars a bit to the year 1985, when graffiti was still coming into its own and proving that it would become a viable form of art, and not just something neighborhood kids did to identify their turf. 
John Robertson, aka King Ravo, is an incredibly important player in the history of graffiti, and in 1985 he created Ravo Incorporated underneath the London Transportation Police Headquarters. This location was extra special because it sat alongside the Regent's Canal, meaning the only way to reach it is by water. Since then, it's the oldest piece of graffiti in London, and since all of King Rabo's other work has since been removed or covered up by local authorities, it's the only piece left of his legacy. But to make his story even more interesting, King Rabo feuded with none other than Banksy, with the latter painting over many of Rabo's work, thus inciting probably one of the first graffiti wars London had ever seen. Number 10. Anthony Bourdain Mural, New York City Anthony Bourdain is easily one of the most beloved people in the 21st century, and even more so within New York. He shared his love affair with food, people, and culture with the world. So when he died in 2018, it came as a huge blow to everyone. But in the Lower East Side neighborhood of New York City, graffiti artist Bradley Thorpe created a piece as a tribute to the late, great Bourdain. The graffiti, which simply depicts a pensive Bourdain, perhaps as he waits for his next amazing meal, was put up just one month after the chef and traveler died, and the wound was still fresh for so many people. Perhaps that was the best time to pay such an artistic tribute. New York City has lots of street art to offer, but this Anthony Bourdain tribute in the Lower East Side is one of the most beautiful, both inside and out. And for the icing on the cake, after Bradley Thorpe finished his artwork, he posted it on Instagram with the caption, In a city full of villains, we all need heroes. The world can feel like a pretty dark place sometimes, but it's in art like this that will keep us in the light. Number 9. Seattle's Gum Wall Not quite your traditional graffiti. The Gum Wall in Seattle is an interesting location that has become street art in its own right. And for those of you out there who have never heard of it, the concept behind Seattle's gum wall was pretty simple. It's a brick wall completely encased in chewing gum. The alley is around the corner from the Pike's Place Market, and people began putting their ABC, or already been chewed gum, all over the wall in the 1990s. And of course, the location became quite the tourist attraction after it blew up on social media. Is it gross? Oh yeah. But is the gum wall iconic? Well, absolutely. People come from all over to add their brightly colored chewing gum of choice to the wall and become a permanent part of the installation. Authorities have tried to get rid of the gum over the last 30 years or so, but the resistance is futile at this point, because it would seem for every piece of gum they manage to carve out of there, another 10 will replace it. The last time the local authorities tried to clean the place up, they managed to get rid of about 2,300 pounds of gum. That's more than one ton of the stuff, so talk about a sticky situation. <laughs> Number 8. Don't Shoot Born in 1980s London and perhaps inspired by the likes of King Rabo, Bambi is the first woman to grace our list of incredible graffiti artists. Much like Banksy, Bambi's real identity is unknown, and much of her work is incredibly provocative with social and political undertones, often depicting current world leaders, pop culture, and various forms of injustice. But her piece titled Don't Shoot is one of her most well-known. Don't Shoot depicts five identical young boys standing side by side, all with hands raised and one foot stepping on a skull. Yes, the work is a bit morbid, but Bambi is speaking to what, for her, is a much larger issue surrounding violence and brutality carried out by the state. And to make an even bigger statement, she brings the corporate world into the mix, with the young boy's shirt showing the Nike logo. But instead, it says, don't do it. As you can imagine, Don't Shoot turned plenty of heads, just as Bambi intended, and even the corporate overlords at Nike made a statement saying how unhappy they were with their brand being added to the thought-provoking equation. Number 7. Crack is Whack When crack cocaine destroyed already at-risk communities across America in the 1980s, Crack is Whack became a popular, albeit cheesy, saying amongst the suburbanites during Ronald Reagan's War on Drugs. But drug addiction was a very real problem, and New York pop and graffiti artist Keith Haring, who we've already met before, decided to channel the suffering he was seeing into art. He created Crack as Whack in 1987 up on East 128th Street in Harlem, just by the Harlem River Drive for everyone to see. And instead of using his more vibrant, colorful, and positive style, Haring opted for a more morbid take on his iconic style, depicting skulls, skeletons, and money with his humanoid figures clamoring about one another for help. 
Crack cocaine was a very real problem, and his crack as whack managed to show just how awful addiction is. But in true form, Herring didn't have the permission to create the mural and was arrested shortly after. Luckily for the spirit of art and artists everywhere, though, people quickly rallied behind Herring and helped to bail him out. Since then, Crack as Whack was vandalized with an opposing pro-drug message, but New York City eventually allowed Herring to recreate his mural with the original message. Number 6. Northwest Falls Festival What do you get when you mix street art, classical sculptures, and some seriously funky architecture? You get Spanish duo Pichi and Avo's mind-boggling work known as the Northwest Falls Festival. Now, this one is an obvious standout because instead of simply throwing up their work on a flat stretch of wall in the middle of the city, they managed to get everything on a stack of seven shipping containers. And as you can probably imagine, this one was a little harder to pull off. This piece of art came to fruition in 2015 and depicts your typical ancient Greek-style sculptures with an urban graffiti-style backdrop. The artists have managed to find some cohesion within the chaos and give us something new while paying homage to the classics. Number 5. The Purple Shall Govern The graffiti artist known as Shepard Fairey is one of the top street artists in the world right now and gained prominence after their Hope poster, which depicted Barack Obama looking to the future during his 2008 campaign for the American presidency. And no matter who folks voted for, everyone had grown accustomed to seeing that picture in their everyday life. So it doesn't come as a surprise that Shepard Fairey earns a spot on this list with their depiction of another world leader. The Purple Shell Govern was made in 2014 on the site of a building in Johannesburg, South Africa, and carries a great deal of weight behind it, depicting the country's first black president and civil rights leader, Nelson Mandela. The mural is 10 stories high and covered over 2,000 square feet of space overlooking the Nelson Mandela Bridge. But how did it get a name like the Purple Shell Govern? Well, it's named after the Purple Rain protest in South Africa, when in 1989 thousands of protesters marched on Parliament, taking a stand against apartheid. The police sprayed the protesters with purple dye so that they could be identified and arrested later on. And so Shepard Ferry created the Purple Shell Govern on the protest's 25th anniversary. It was also Shepard's first mural on the African continent. Number 4. Tracy 168 Subway Car We've seen a lot of modern graffiti on our list so far, but now it's time to pay tribute to one of the pioneers of the art form. Tracy 168 is the name of a New York graffiti artist known for his wild style, which was incredibly popular in the 1980s and is what many people think of when they think of graffiti. It's big, bold, and sometimes abrasive, but it helped to spawn an entire counterculture of artists. Tracy 168 has one piece in particular that has managed to stand out against his larger body of work, which is simply a cartoonish self-portrait with the name Tracy serving as the backdrop. And because it was put on the door of a New York City subway car, this allowed his work to quite literally travel around the city and garner the type of attention that a stationary piece thrown up on a wall can never have. Tracy 168's wild style became so popular that in fact it was even heavily featured in the 1983 film Wild Style, which was all about the hip-hop and street culture of the day. The legacy of Tracy 168 and his subway car lives on today, as he mentored many other graffiti artists like Keith Haring and Samo. And while that subway car has been good and clean since the 1980s, you can find a lot of Tracy 168's work in the Brooklyn Museum. Number 3. Marianne there's no way we can only mention Shepard Fairey just once on a list like this. Even more iconic than his The Purple Shall Govern is his 2016 work, Marianne. Fairey is the founder of Obey, whose art graces the t-shirts of millions of young people in the 2000s, and you can still find his Andre the Giant stickers in the bathroom of dive bars all around the world. But he managed to blow that style up quite literally with Marianne. Shepard Ferry put Marianne in the 13th district of Paris, depicting the personification of the French Republic with the motto, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, or Liberty, Equality, Fraternity. But while most people were putting the French flag over their face on Facebook following the 2015 Charlie Hebdo attacks, Shepard Ferry was painting Marianne to commemorate the lives that were lost and the people who said no in the face of adversity. Number two, the giant of Boston. Otavio and Gustavo Panfolo are the twin duo of graffiti artists hailing from Brazil. Also known as Os Gemeos, the twins are some of the top names within their community, and much of their artwork is world-renowned. 
In 2012, they made some of their finest work at Dewey Park Square in Boston. The Giant of Boston may look a little goofy, but there's no denying that it's a masterpiece. Part of an exhibition for the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, the giant looks as though he's cramming himself into 70 square feet of space without any room to spare. But what makes the Giant of Boston so cool is that they were able to make something look so large in such a small space. It's an incredibly clever piece and a great reminder that at times, technical restrictions can bring out some of the most creative ideas. Pressure will always create diamonds. Number 1. Flower Thrower Just one year after he brought us the little girl with the balloon, Banksy struck gold again with his stencil on a Jerusalem wall in 2003, named Flower Thrower. Flower Thrower is incredibly powerful, depicting a masked protester throwing a bouquet of flowers in place of a Molotov cocktail. Banksy obviously has a pretty firm grasp on the horrors and complicated nature of wars and violent conflicts, and Flower Thrower shows that off pretty well. And while that protest may be standing amidst the violence, peace is still his goal. Its location in Jerusalem is no coincidence either. Since people first saw Flower Thrower in 2003, it's been reproduced countless times on t-shirts and as prints, and it's even featured in a compilation of Banksy's work. It's an incredibly simple idea, but Flower Thrower has already gone down as one of the most recognizable and incredible works of graffiti of all time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.